The following video is part one of a three-part series with one of our former clients by the name of Steve Wilt. He's a 58-year-old financial services manager in Akron, Ohio. And in January of 2024, clients of ours all met in Sedona, Arizona for a three-day conference, which was amazing. We have this annual retreat uh, every single year. And Steve came back from beyond beyond 90. So he was about a year and a half alcohol free when he came to our conference and he gave this amazing talk to our existing clients and it really brought the house down. So he's gonna share a little bit in this first video, uh, a future self meditation. So you'll probably wanna find a nice comfortable spot here. Uh, he'll introduce this meditation beforehand, um, give you a little bit of background on him and his journey through Project 90, Beyond 90. But uh, you'll probably want to find a nice, quiet place to go through this incredibly powerful transformation. And then in part two, which will be shown tomorrow or in a future day, he's going to share a little bit more about how he stopped drinking and the incredible benefits that he has got from that. So you'll want to keep an eye out for part two. And then in part three, he does a Q&A with a lot of our Project 90 and Beyond 90 clients who were present that day. And uh, you'll definitely want to listen in as some of the, the clients ask questions and he answers them. Uh, so for now, here's part one of three. Enjoy this conversation and this future self meditation with our former client, Steve Wilt. Who here is here doing Project 90 at the moment? Who here is in the middle of Project 90 at the moment? Hands up. Amazing. For all those who are beyond Project 90, give these guys a round of applause for being here. Project 90. How many days you are at the moment? How, how days? How many days? Uh, 46. Amazing. 46. Preston? 60. Yeah. 60. Yeah. Who else have their hand up, How many days? 29. 29. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yeah. Brandy, yeah, Brandy. I'm about two weeks. I don't know the Amazing. exact number yet. Yeah. So good. So uh, who here is uh, in Beyond 90? Who is in Beyond 90 at the moment? Amazing. And so if you're in Beyond 90, you know what is beyond alcohol, right? You guys have got an idea about that. And there are lots of people in the room here right now who are in Project 90 who are probably wondering what happens from day 90 onwards. What is life like beyond alcohol? And so our next speaker today has uh, absolutely experienced that and is actively experiencing that. Uh, I'll let him share his story rather than me just sharing his story for him. But uh, Steve Wilt here, who's about to speak, has been a wonderful supporter of uh, alcohol-free lifestyle uh, since he became a grad, since he became a client, since he became a graduating client. Um, our staff, myself, and uh, C uh, Victoria, or maybe it's Sarah. I think Sarah yeah, have spoken uh, at Steve's company, Cat Trust about 250 uh, of Cat Trust employees, um, in part because Steve invited us to do so, and uh, Steve's been on podcasts, uh, and uh, you may have seen some of uh, a clip of me and Steve speaking on the podcast, maybe on social media, on Instagram, and he's uh, really, by his own, in his own words, really transformed uh, his health I've really have improved his relationship with uh, his family and has just been an incredible champion of alcohol-free lifestyle. And so I, I personally thank you for that, Steve. Thank you so much for that. Give Steve a big round of applause. Please welcome Steve to talk about life beyond alcohol. Thanks, Thanks James. Thanks, Steve. All right. <laughs> I'm really excited, uh, one, to be here with all of you and to get to know you. It's so surreal. Uh, I met nobody in this room, uh, you know, until I got here yesterday, except for Lauren, actually. Um, but to see all the faces and to get to know you personally has been wonderful, uh, because this is something life-changing that we're doing, right? Um, we're going to get into some good stuff. I'd, I'd ask you to put your cell phones away for this session, if you don't mind. Turn them over, put them away, because uh, I need you to be with me as we go through this to get the full impact. All right. So we're gonna talk about the gift that we've been given by being alcohol free. I'm gonna to touch on the high achievers in the room and what that means pre and post alcohol. What it means to wake up from that fog that we're in all those years. Um, we're gonna talk about unlocking the final level and being your best self. 
talk a little bit about purpose and how to help others with this gift that we've been given. So I'm going to start, and I would just propose that we've been given one of the greatest gifts of our lives, the opportunity to be alcohol-free. We all had to choose that gift. We all know that nobody takes that gift until they're ready. But we've been given this opportunity at a second chance in life, if you will. And we were saying at our firm that uh, this is not a dress rehearsal. Life is not a dress rehearsal. Um, and here we are with this amazing gift, this from wherever you want to call it, gift from God, gift from glory, gift from James, Sarah, and Victoria. And we've taken it, and now we have it. So the question is, what do we do with it, right? And for me, I think about the number one thing we have to do is remain alcohol-free. No matter what, if we don't do anything else, beautiful, we're there. Um, but I would also ask, um, as I look at it, what, is, what if we're intentional about becoming our best self? And I believe being intentional is a superpower. Being intentional is one of the things that propels me to whatever success I've had, making a decision, I'm going this way and going that way and being intentional about it. But what if we're really intentional about becoming our best selves? And then what if we chose to share the story with others? And if you're two weeks in, the idea of telling anyone that you're alcohol free can be really hard, right? The idea of admitting it to anyone can be daunting. But after a while, it becomes really easier to share the story as you get more and more conviction about it over time. So maybe we choose to share the gift with people we care about and that we love. Uh, one of the things that attracted me to P90 uh, was the high achievers in the room. And as I've gotten to know you, uh, as was mentioned by Paul, CEOs, people that run companies, bankers, real estate agents, uh, attorneys that own two, three companies. Like there are so many high achievers in this room and in this group, it's just incredible. And I think about being a high achiever with alcohol in our lives and being a high achiever without alcohol, right? When I started down this path, I was at the top of my game. And there's no humble way to say it, but I was one of the top producers in our firm year after year after year. I'm on so many boards at Akron doing so much nonprofit work, it's crazy. My marriage is wonderful. I'm a single digit handicap golfer. I play a lot of tennis, go to national tournaments. Like it's just been a role and that's a 3-0. I'm not like a great tennis player, but at my level, uh, good enough. And I was just rolling. But I realized at some point it wasn't my full potential. As good as it was, it wasn't as good as it should have been. And it took a while to get there, right? Somebody said this to me, somebody I really admire when I told them I was thinking about quitting and they said, Steve, you don't have time to drink. You're a high achiever. How can you accomplish all that you were meant to accomplish? How can you accomplish all that you want to accomplish? How can you accomplish all that you were put on this world to accomplish if you're wasting hours and hours thinking about alcohol, drinking alcohol, being hung over the next day? How can you really get it all done? And that, that really hit me when uh, Marsha is her name, a friend of mine for years who's always had insight into me, said that it really made a big difference to me. So this is how I really felt. I see it's a little white there, uh, but I had imposter syndrome. I felt like I was in a self-imposed prison that no one else knew about. Not even my wife, not even my friends, no one knew that I was in this prison. I had this dirty secret that I didn't want anybody to find out about. And secrets are horrible to have, especially when people that you care about. I can remember not looking in the mirror intentionally because I didn't like what I saw coming back at me. Anybody else feel any of those feelings? Yeah, right? Everybody thinks you're killing it on every level, but you wake up and you look in the mirror and you're like, Dude, you did it again? What in the world were you thinking, right? And then I heard this phrase from uh, somebody that uh, I met James through, Dominic Cortuccio. It's actually an anonymous quote, and forgetting that it's, it's not gender neutral, it talks about the man, but the, the quote is that on your deathbed, the man that you became, or the woman that you became, will meet the man or woman you could have become. So the person that you became will meet the man or woman you could have become. And it hit me like a ton of bricks for a couple of reasons. Um, one, I knew that I would not be happy about that. And two, very personally, um, I had a twin brother that didn't make it through birth. 
my mom told me when I was 18. And I had vowed from that moment on to live a life worthy of, his name would have been Scott, right? To suck the marrow out of life, to live for two, to make sure that I was giving it my all because he didn't have that opportunity. So when I heard this, I pictured Scott coming to my deathbed. And what would he think of me being that person, not the person I could have become, wasting the life that he didn't have? It was so deep and it made such a difference. And it was part of the thing that got me started on this journey. But it took me years to finish, right? So I'm gonna invite you, if you don't mind, to do a, a little meditation with me. And we're gonna turn down the lights just a little bit here. I'm gonna invite you to, <clears throat> and this is the meditation that changed my life. I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes if you're comfortable. If not, just gaze down a little bit. And maybe shake out any tension, roll your neck or your shoulders. And start doing some breathing, just slowly in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And that's good a normal breath. And I want you to envision that you're in a, a great forest with massive pine trees. And you're walking through it and it's safe and it's comfortable. And there's room between the pines and you can smell the scent in the air, and it's beautiful. And as you're walking, you come to the end of the forest and you see a black floor and black sky and everything around you, it's like a movie, is this black area. And you're a little intimidated, but you decide to take a step into it. And when you step into it, it's like it's water beneath you, but it's firm almost like electric magnets go out, like you dropped a pebble into the water and big circles go out into infinite space. And you take another step and those circles go out into infinite space. And before you know it, the forest is gone and you're surrounded by nothing. And then as you're all alone, you feel a presence to your left and someone approaches you. And the closer they get, the more you realize that it's you. And as this version of you approaches, you realize that it's the you that was drinking. It is you completely hung over. It's you after a bender. And you gaze upon yourself. And the first thing you notice is how red your eyes are and how bad your skin is and how messy your hair is because of the sleepless night that you had. And maybe as you view that person, you realize the difference in the body from when you quit drinking to now, the weight loss, the better, all of the differences that you've had since that period of time. And that prior version of you is a headache. And their stomach is messed up and they're exhausted and they might even smell. And as you look upon that person, that version of you starts to say something. And that version of you says to you, please, please never do this to us again. Never. And you commit right there to that version of you that you will not do that to you, to your body or to your soul ever again. And that version slowly walks away. And you take solace in the decision that you've made. You feel good about who you are today. You have self-love emanating throughout your body because you've made one of the biggest single choices of your life. And then on the right side, you sense another person coming. And as that person gets closer, you realize that it's the future version of you. This version is maybe a little brighter, maybe in a little better shape, maybe clearer skin, maybe just more comfortable or confident or soulfully strong. And as you gaze upon that future version of yourself, your best version, your great man or great woman, the person you were put on this earth to become, and you think, what do I have to do to become that person? 
What's left? What's next? Is there another addiction? Is there a step I need to take? Is it better nutrition? Is it more workouts? Is it repairing a relationship? And that version of you puts one hand on your left shoulder and one hand on your right shoulder and says two things. The first thing they say is, I'm proud of you. Thank you. And then they say, to become me, the next step you need to take is, and you fill in the blank, the next step you need to take is. And that version of you hugs you and walks off slowly. So I'm gonna ask you to slowly come back to the room. Don't open your eyes yet. Maybe it wiggles your fingers and toes. Roll out your neck again, and then slowly open your eyes. So I'm going to ask for any reflections that you have. These lights don't get you too much. When I went through that meditation with Dominic, my great man said to me, you'll never be me unless you quit alcohol. I didn't see it coming. I was stunned. I didn't quit right away, but it meant that much. So I see a few emotions in the room. Anybody want to share? How that felt, or anything that came up for you? Please. Uh, yesterday, I saw a psychic, and she said, something's been strangling you, mm. and you're free of it, and it's behind you. Wow. And she didn't know what that was, but right. I feel free now. Wonderful. That's beautiful. I hate that left side of me. Mm. I don't miss her at all. It's yeah. really great to be on the right side. Beautiful. Anyone else? Please. Um, I saw my old self, but I also saw so many of my friends mm. in line. Yeah. I just want to help them. We're going to talk about that. Thanks for sharing. Any last reflections? Please, I, Sheila. Um, I saw myself um, hugging cast. Uh, person who was drinking saying, you know, I got you. I got mm. you. It's okay. And then was surprising to me, the future me was giving me a hug saying, I got you. Mm -hmm. I got you. Mm -hmm. It's going to be okay. Yeah. Awesome. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, Small yeah. Small thing, just for the like, so see myself, that was the first self. We went to dinner with some people that hadn't seen us in six months that are very supportive of us. And the first thing they said was, wow, you look so different, both of you. you know, right. Your, your face, your complexion, your eyes. So it reminded me of a little bit of that right side. Yeah. Yeah. When somebody says that to you, it feels pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. We're all having those experiences, or we will as we go.